Uh, thank you for having me. Um, the, um, yeah, my name my name's Adam, um, and I work for a, a, a small company called uh, FutureGov. And um, Nadia asked a really interesting question uh, towards the end of the last, well, towards the end of the um, on the panel discussion we had before, around what next. This is a really interesting uh, couple of days. These are really interesting people I've spoken to, and can we create some kind of sustainability? around what we're trying to achieve here. Can we create a consultancy, maybe? Um, uh, and FutureGov is, in effect, it's lots of things, but it is a consultancy. So what I'd like to do is to talk about how FutureGov have done it, and talk about some of our failures, uh, and um, to try and move from some of the theories um, and some of the examples we've heard, and try and uh, talk about how we've um, tried to tackle uh, those same ones. So hopefully that answers that. Um, I started with a Venn diagram. Um, everyone likes a Venn diagram. I certainly do. We, uh, um, uh, um, this is how we actually see ourselves as an organisation. Um, we uh, believe in um, design and we believe in service design specifically, um, which means user research, which means similar things to what the Young Foundation do in really understanding ethnographic challenges which are taking place in society. And then we use service design techniques to try and work out how the system might be able to change. And we have people like me with a background in government to try and understand how you move from ethnography and understanding to working through the system and working through systems change. And sometimes the answer is technology. Often technology will be the uh, environment in which we work but we, go, uh, we try and go as far as we can in terms of delivery by actually building the products in-house. So we have our own developers and our own tech team. So we stretch ourselves quite thinly, which makes us vulnerable and means we do mistakes. Um, but we try and cover the whole gambit of uh, service delivery, which includes building in-house. We um, are about six years old. We started um, in local government, um, our two founders, and uh, with a realization that technology was, was changing the world significantly, and that um, uh, and that local government, in particular, um, could run services differently. And at the beginning, it was just about advice on Twitter. So, what is Twitter? Uh, they were asked, and. Uh, Will it go away? And um, uh, we tried to explain and then said no. Um, and, uh, it, but it grew from there. Uh, and it grew into something more sophisticated uh, and more challenging for ourselves. So kind of beyond Twitter and into um, across the world. We primarily work with local government, local councils in the UK. Um, we got seed funding from uh, Nesta originally, so thank you, Adam. Um, my name's not actually Adam. As part of the negotiations for that funding, I had to change my name, so that's why I'm also Adam. My real name's actually Roger. <laughs> but we still haven't delivered on what Nesta have asked of us. They're still on the board, so I'm still Adam. Most of our contracts are with local government. And because of the funding we got from Nesta and the funding we got from a local authority who thought, well, this is so interesting, we're actually going to put money in to your organization because we believe in what you're trying to do, we were able to grow. And we're now around 50 people strong with an office in Australia. So we've grown from two people around six years ago to 50 people today. Uh, and there are lots of stories I can tell, um, but I want, uh, well, well, if you come to the workshop, I can bore you with them there. This is where I'm from. I'm from local government. I spent over five years in local government inside the system. We talked about inside-outside. I think there is an important distinction between inside-outside, and I'll talk about why that is. But I worked in Brixton and Lambeth and then in Tower Hamlets, uh, and I worked in central government before that. But the world is changing. Uber. Um, Uber is uh, a nice example because um, people get a little bit worked up. Uh, about it, so it's often good to put a slide up here because um, suddenly people who 
get a little bit more interested, but it was also interesting. Does this have a pointer? Oh, look at this. Uh, so rating review is really interesting. I don't know how familiar people are with Uber. It seems um, the yellow cabs are still quite strong here in Berlin and Germany generally, but um, rating review uh, changes the dynamic between the user of a service and the provider. Not only can I um, uh, rate the service I have, but the service rates me, so I have to be a good user. That changes the dynamic and the power. Cashless means it's very convenient and very quick, and transparent means I can see everything. So these are lessons that might or might not be valuable for government. Expectations are going up because of Uber, because people think, well, if I can order a cab really quickly, or if I can buy really quickly online, or if I can add stuff on Wikipedia and get really good information from Wikipedia, or if I can set up my own social enterprise, uh, I should be able to do more with government. Before Adobe Reader, there uh, was Gutenberg and the Gutenberg Press. Uh, and um, it does feel like Germany has been here before. And the question I want to answer over the next months and years, and one of the reasons I'm here is to understand not just the German, not just the kind of Bismarckian kind of view of how uh, administration works, but the psyche in Germany and in, in parts of Europe. Uh, which influences the way people talk about digital and the questions that are asked and the need to have evidence and the need to know that things are working. So Gutenberg is a really interesting example of how you create mass communication. It completely transformed the way we communicate from being locked into a very small, slow, expensive system to something that triggered the, uh, the ideas that would follow. So Martin Luther, used the uh, Gutenberg Press, but more interestingly, he used technology and put ideas on top of them in order to be able to transform the way we think and the way we work. And he cut the ultimate middleman, so he was way ahead of Uber. He's like the, and way ahead of Airbnb, and way ahead of eBay. He was cutting out the middleman long, long ago. So how do you do a startup? Well, Casserole Club is one of our um, uh, main um, uh, services, and it allows us a platform which allows neighbors to share an extra plate of food with another elderly neighbor in the local area. And um, it's created some really beautiful moments and some really good friendships. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a really lovely program. Lantern uh, tries, these are just, we've done about 50 projects, these are just a, a smattering. Lantern is uh, asked the question around um, uh, asking for permission or understanding what uh, I am entitled to as an individual um, and allows the individual to uh, search and to um, fill out um, their own needs for adult social care and they get an understanding of whether they are eligible from the local government or from the state and then it points them in the direction of other services that might help them, taking out the need for government, which often people don't want to do because they don't like queuing. Child story is more interesting. Um, very briefly, commissioning, the way government commissions is often what you might call waterfall, um, is where you've defined a lot of the outputs and you've defined what it is you want to achieve. And often that's right because you have experts who know what needs to be achieved. Budgets follow, legislation follows, and you're within a framework which says, okay, this is what we want to achieve. You go out to market competitive tendering. Unfortunately, that doesn't, doesn't work as well as it could. The Australian government was going to do this for social care casework management systems, and we said, please don't. Uh, please start with a modular way. Technology is really cheap to build now. We have a real opportunity to build technology very cheaply, very quickly. Let's understand what the problems are and then build one by one. And if it breaks, it's easy to fix. If you build something very big, it's difficult to fix. So we need resident, resident need, not system need, as we've spoken about. This is the example which we've uh, recently, yeah, one, one of our projects was to go into a little more detail about how we actually do it in practice. So um, a local authority approached us and said, one of the issues we have is that um, young people with mental health needs um, don't feel like they're involved. We've heard a lot about disenfranchisement, and this went for these young people too. And so we had a fairly open brief to understand what it is they wanted from the system and how they felt about 
being a young person, having mental health needs, being depressed, having schizophrenia, having uh, an ailment that lots of people didn't understand. So we went into a workshop, we got people to articulate what it is that, uh, that they feel and what it is that they think about the system, organized into journey maps, organized then into paper prototyping. Very cheap way of building something is with paper. You can throw it away, it doesn't cost very much, available in most stores. And you can start to visualize what the future might look like. And because of our leaning, we lent towards digital. But we got the young people to design it. So we thought, yes, we've got the answer. What we need is a um, way to collaborate between the doctor and the young person. Because young people, they told us, feel very anxious about going to the doctors. So we need a system whereby they can collaborate and whereby the young person, so they feel less anxious, can make a list which they can share with the doctor, so when they go to the doctors, who's a very important person for them, they feel less anxious, and the doctor knows about what they want to talk about. No, that wasn't the answer. We built that, and they said, no, we don't actually like this. What we want is something we can, where we can answer questions about ourselves over time, keep, and then throw away. We don't want it on the internet, we don't want it with our doctor, we just want it for ourselves, and we will print it out. I don't want to share what my mental health needs are, but I want to have a way of articulating them in a way that the system understands. So that's what we've built. It's been downloaded over 2,000 times, it's been used endless amounts of times. We don't know the full impact, which we are measuring, um, but this is an example how you rapidly go from understanding a user need to actually building something, and it's a tech example. This is some of the processes we use. Briefly talk about inside government. Government digital services in the UK is a startup inside government, effectively. So they had a mandate, very important. We've talked about politics of tomorrow. The politics of tomorrow for the government digital service is a mandate to say, yes, we can do technology much more cheaply. And the reason is because we traditionally have very expensive IT contracts. So there are designers, there are people who build, there are people who project manage, there are user researchers, they are all inside government, paid for by the government, and they build websites. But they also change the way we think about how government should be run. And they're trying to change the way our assumptions around running government by department. So the early phase is moving from user-unfriendly websites to more user-friendly websites. They estimate the savings, and I know the UK is, the assumption is that we're there for savings. It's true, but that's what the political environment is. And there's been over a billion visits in two years to the new site. And this is what they're telling politicians uh, when they come to events like this, quite uh, abruptly. So this means, oh, hello, sorry. Uh, so. Um, the long and short of it is that we're in a position whereby the government or uh, authorities or organizations are gatekeepers to information and gatekeepers to resources. Uh, and what we'd like to see is that those resources uh, are holistically placed around the user. And examples which we've done around not needing uh, a government to get to have meals delivered to elderly people not needing the system to get adult social care means that you can start trying these ideas out. And this is permanent. Um, the way we, we would like to see things change is so we embed different cultures and uh, diff embed different ways of working uh, in the public sector and make it a really cool place to work as well. Uh, and um, make it a place where there's great energy and greater optimism in what is a very, very difficult financially and geopolitically difficult time. So, don't disappoint these guys. They were innovators. Uh, they disrupted. Um, and uh, they were proudly, well, they were German or what, 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 what's the Kleinstein at the time. And, uh, and, if, and if those don't inspire, then just get a bit angry, like Rammstein and uh, just shout at the world for a bit, and then uh, just kind of chill out after that. Thank you very much.